Hi, my name is Frankie Widows. I am a master lash artist with 11 years experience within the industry. I'm also the founder of Eyelash Excellence, which is my brand, and we ship our product across the globe. Now, in addition to that, I'm still a working lash artist. I am a lash trainer, and I have traveled the world teaching my techniques. I'm also a lash judge at the biggest lash competitions, and I do judge online, and I also do travel the world as well, where I speak at some of the biggest lash competitions out there. Now with my videos, I love to share all the techniques that I've learned over the years, just to really help you guys out because I appreciate that learning lashes and learning it correctly can be really difficult. So for this reason, I do hope that you enjoy my videos and if you do, please give them a like because it makes me then know that the content that I'm putting out there is stuff that you like. Don't forget to check out my other videos as well because there's loads of other great content on there and of course we've got more videos coming all of the time. So hope you enjoy them and thank you in advance for your support. So in today's video, I am going to show you how to work correctly with the different lash layers that you get on a client. So what I mean by that is that we're applying the correct length to the right layers so that you're getting a nice, smooth top line and not staggered tips. Now, some staggered tips are okay, but if you get it really wrong, you're gonna have lash lengths that stick out of the set and no one likes that look. So I hope with this simple video, you'll now understand how to work correctly with the layers. So if you've come here expecting to see me work the layers using tape to expose each layer, then unfortunately you're at the wrong video. However, what I am going to be doing is showing you, you don't need to use tape to identify each layer. You can do this very simply without. And for me, I've never really used tape to expose each layer unless I'm doing, for example, sort of an extreme color set where I need each layer of the lashes, the top, the middle, the bottom to be exposed. But to be honest, in the UK, color is not big if you're out in Eastern Europe than it is big but here I never do that so I simply use my tweezers to isolate. Now I'm doing this on a mannequin head because this is a great way to really show you close up all the different layers that you can get in the lashes. Now actually most clients will have six layers of lashes. You'll be taught three but actually it's six if you look close up. Yes normally there's two or three in the inners and outers but across the eye it's going to be six. However we're going to group them into three layers. So group them into the bottom layer, the middle layer and the top layer and we need to know how to isolate out each layer and place the correct length on each layer of lashes and once you get the hang of this it is really simple trust me now what i want to imagine is that you are let's say at a jumble sale or a yard sale where you have a pile of clothes and these lashes are going to be like clothes in a big pile. You're going to have clothes that sit at the very, very bottom of the pile. You're going to have clothes that sit in the middle and you're going to have clothes that sit on the top. And you just need to learn how to identify where they're sitting. And if you turn your head to the side and look in, this can really help. But this is why a lot of people do use tape because they haven't learned how to identify each layer. But this is such a shortcut, it really is. So this is where experience comes in and you just need to take a little bit of time to start working through the lash layers to identify what lashes sit on the bottom, the middle or the top. Now quick tip, if you get lashes, you sometimes get stray ones that will grow up here in the very top layers, ignore them. Do not put a lash extension on them, however much they scream out that they're lovely, do not because when the eyes open it will stick out like a sore thumb. Also sometimes if you lift the lashes up you'll see little tiny baby lashes that are sticking out from the bottom very low. Again don't lash those. You'll have to change your curl because normally they grow down poker straight. They're usually baby lashes we don't want to lash them and again if you do put an extension on them if they are a baby lash they're going to grow out too much and again they'll hang out of the set. So unless your client has got a really low lash count ignore them remember we only lash suitable lashes we don't need to lash to 100% we pick out the good lashes and put extensions on those only so once we've identified what is a bottom layer which this one is what is a middle layer and what is a top layer we've got to know what lengths to put on them now when we actually do eyelash extensions you should be lash mapping every good experienced lash artist will lash map and that is where we have a pad on which we haven't got on here and we've drawn our lash map on the pad this is the only way in which you're going to get complete symmetry of the eyes and actually get a really nice looking set i know people freestyle and that's great for them but precision lash artists always lash map and this is going to help you with your layering so for example i want you to imagine that 
that this section here would be a 12 millimeter zone. So we're going to be putting 12 millimeter extensions on them. But we're not going to be putting a 12 millimeter on every extension in that zone because as we travel up through the layers, you'll see there's usually about a one millimeter gap between the bottom, the middle and the top layer. So if we were to put a 12 millimeter on the lower layer, on the middle layer and the top layer, your tips when the eye is open is going to be staggered. Now, if your client likes that effect, that's absolutely fine. But if you want a really nice, precise top line effect so that lashes are really, really neat, you are going to need to be working with different lengths. So to do this correctly and to competition standard and how I lash, if I was working on a lower layer lash, I would put a 12 millimeter on there because that is what is mapped on my pad. But then when I went to a lash that was on the middle layer, I would put an 11. I'm going down by one millimeter because there is a one millimeter gap between the bottom lash and the middle lash. And then if I went to a top layer lash, I would then be putting a 10 millimeter on there. So I've dropped two millimeters. So I would have a 12 on the bottom, an 11 on the middle, and a 10 on the top. Because like I said, there's a three millimeter approximate gap here between the lower layer and the top layer. And I want all of my tips to run in line. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna practically put some extensions on here. I'm gonna be using YY lashes just to show you. Now we are working on the mannequin head and if you do work on mannequin heads, yes, they're a great training aid, but they are much harder to work on than a real client. And the reason being is because the lashes are PBT. They're basically plasticky. And I'm trying to put a plastic extension onto a plastic uh, mimicked natural lash and they literally slide around like glass pretty much now to speed it up you need to increase your temperature and humidity if you're working on a practice head you can also spray these lashes with hairspray i've not done it on this mannequin head because this is one of my nice ones as you can see but spraying with hairspray it can activate it and you can also put speedy accelerators that we sell on the shop onto these lashes and onto your lashes on your tile just to help speed up everything so we're going to do our very best here to get these uh, extensions to bond to this um practice head but obviously bear with me if they don't like I said this is not a natural lash it doesn't have moisture in there which is very mag magnetic normally when we're actually working on a real client so what I'm going to be doing here is isolating out and trying to find a lower lash now it doesn't really matter when I work on a client I just dive in and whatever lash I get I'm like oh, okay that's a top a middle or a bottom it's a bit like a game show really um but for the purpose of the video we're going to go in first of all and try and find ourselves a lower lash now this one is it sits right on the bottom it's the furthest away from me so if I'm in my 12 millimeter zone I'm going to go and pick up my 12 millimeter eyelash extension dip it in the adhesive and then we're going to come on and we're going to attach this to the lower layer let's try and get this to stick it's pretty cold today and we're putting plastic onto plastic so there we go we've put that one on so what i'm now going to do is i'm going to come in and try and find myself a middle layer lash so one that sits above what we've just worked on and because that's in the middle layer we're going to be putting an 11 millimeter on there because we've just put a 12 millimeter on the lower lash now if you want to try and get your layers really close together try and put this extension either on the side or the bottom of this natural lash because i actually placed this 12 millimeter on the top of that lower lash to bring it up slightly closer to the middle layer so here i'm going to try and go off the side or off the bottom it's probably going to be easier to come off the bottom on this practice lash just because it's not a real lash I'm trying to come off the bottom, it's not easy. I think I'm actually off the side. It's not the best attachment because it is a practice lash, but we're going to go with it. So we've placed that 11mm now on the middle layer. So now what we're going to do is we're going to come and fish out a top layer lash. And again, I wouldn't normally work this close proximity to lashes that I've already put on because we're going to get stickies so I tend to work across the eye stay as far away from the lashes that you've just put on now because we put an 11 millimeter on I'm now going to put a 10 millimeter on that top layer and again I'm going to try and come underneath that natural lash to try and keep those layers close together coming underneath oh we've got a little bit of a flop on going on but hey ho that's what happens when we're working on practice lashes like I said, real lashes will just be magnetic and take these off you because of the moisture in the natural lash. And there we go. So we've got a 12 on the bottom, 11 on the middle and a 10 on the top. 
Now on its own, it's not gonna look overly pretty because you know when you've built the whole set, you've got all of the lashes there nicely together, but you are going to get a nice super sharp top line, which I will show you in this image here, just so you can see what I'm talking about when the full set has been created. So I hope that just shows you that you don't need to be using sticky tape to be able to pull the lashes back to expose each layer. Like you said, you'll see videos a bit where people are putting pads on there, exposing the top layers. If you learn this craft and this just comes through experience, you will very quickly be able to dive in. So for example, I'm gonna dive in here and isolate a natural lash. Let's go for this one here. And I can tell you that's a middle lash because I know what I'm looking at. If I go in and go down here, again, that's a middle lash. Up here, that's a top lash. This one's a lower lash. You can very quickly learn which lash is that, which. At the end of the set, if you're struggling, you still think you've got lashes that are unexposed or unlashed, you can use a bit of tape to pull back here. But again, I don't. You might just use your tweezers and be like, oh, there's a couple there. And that's when you can then focus on that area. Go in and do your isolation, find it and put an extension on it. But yeah, give this a go. Don't worry about everybody else taping their lashes back. I know a lot of people struggle. They put the tape on, then they take the tape off and the lashes come off with it. I'm one of them. Just persevere at this and keep building this set. Like I said, it looks a bit rubbish when you've just got three on here, but if you keep doing it, you will be able to build yourself a really beautiful set with a lovely sharp top line.